Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, let's go over pop-up menu button, as well as we'll review states again, and let's review card. So it's going to be all part of the same mobile application. I'm going to go to flutter.io catalog samples. And here, let's go over these and how to actually make these, what's the proper syntax and what is the proper behavior um, as best we can do, all right? So before we did tabs, we did some of these radio buttons. Let's go a little bit further on. But I'm going to break this up and change, the, change it a little bit so it will build upon what we've already learned. So here's the pop-up menu button. Nice simple icon. You click on it and it gives you a list of things. You choose whatever is listed there and the icon will change, okay? It's pretty straightforward mobile application. So what do I need to do for this? I need several things. Number one, I need a list, right? I need to get this list of information right inside of here. So I need to create that number one. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go down here and say, here is my list. But before I begin, how am I going to access this information on the list? What is the best way to actually do it? Well, I could just get the item and get the list, but sometimes each item in the list has more than one characteristic, more than one property. So for example, um, I will have here, it will be a car icon and it will be the car text. What if I have a bunch of other different things? So how will I get that information? Well, if I treat this all as one object, okay, not a widget, one, which it is a widget, but, but we're talking about one object in and of itself, I can make it just an entire object and then I can go ahead and access the properties. Kind of like what we do with colors.red or icons.directions underscore car. It's going to be we're going to access the properties of the object in and of itself. So I need to create a bunch of different objects for the list, right? So I'm going to here, I'm going to say choice of transport and the properties I'm going to need to access are the title, which is going to be like car, bike or something. And then the icon data, the icon right inside of here. All right. So let's create the list. I'm going to have a list choice of transport. That's the type. And here are my choices. And the list is going to include new objects right inside of here. Each object is different and each object will have a title and an icon associated with it. So a list of objects of type choice of transport with the following properties and that I just made. All right. Um, in the sample right here, they did a lot more using of const and final and stuff like that. We didn't go over that in great detail. From my understanding, as Flutter goes by, and maybe by the time you re um, see this video, um, those may be optional, just like new, the keyword new may be optional. So it will be understood that if it re is required to be a new object or a const or a final, the Flutter framework will automatically build into it and you don't actually have to type that. So for example, if you hover over here, it says this class inherits from a class marked as immutable. All instance fields must be final. So here we have to put actually There we go. Okay, so that was the instantiation. Okay, so, all right, there we go. That was the constructor, I mean, so you can't have a constructor final. Um, right inside here, oh, you could probably do this also. As well. But again, it's probably going to be optional in the future from my understanding. So we have our list. All right, now let's, where do we go from here? Um, we're going to have to create a state. Okay. We'll go over that in just a little bit, but actions, scaffold, app bar, we know this already. New pop-up menu. Under the actions, this is going to be a list of widgets. So it's going to be a list of widgets that go across actually, but I'm only going to need this. Pop-up menu button, choice of transport. Okay. And then it's going to be what's inside, right inside of here. All right. Oh, by the way, the default 
icon. I could change it to a access time icon. That doesn't make any sense, but just to let you know, it's a doable thing. Okay, you can change the icon if you want. Elevation just makes it have more of a 3D look. Uh, I'm not sure if I see it. Eh, but it, but it can look a little bit better, probably on different themes and stuff like that. Initial value, choices on the list, the one position. So I click on there. Notice bicycle is already highlighted right inside of here. Initial value doesn't mean it's chosen for you, but it's highlighted, so you might want to click on that first. All right? But remember, uh, as always, on the list, zero position, one position. Keep that in mind, as always, okay? On canceled. You click on it. You click elsewhere. Or you tap elsewhere, or you don't tap that. It'll, it prints, you didn't choose anything. That's just because that's what I chose. That's what on canceled means. You click on it and you don't do anything. Not essential to have this, but you can. Tooltip. On web applications, you hover over for the tooltip. For mobile applications, you do have to do a long press. This is the tooltip. So um, I'm going to left click this long, and it's going to be, this is the tooltip right inside here. On selected, so on selected, this is the method that will change the state. When you click onto it, on selected, this is actually a function reference, okay? So it goes to the select right up inside of here, and it basically inter automatically, the thing that you selected on, the widget you selected on, automatically gets sent up inside of here with this information. So in this state itself, choice of transport, selective choice, it's going to equal as a default choices, which is, what's the default choice? It's car, right? Car, which is because it's, that's, the, that's the number zero position on the list. So that's the default. Once you click on there, right inside of here, bus, it's going to, on selected, selects that, sends bus. What number is that? Zero, one, two, three. Third, zero, one, two, three. That's the third position. It sends up information right here. Choice of transport, this is going to be a bus. Selected choice changes that into a bus. Okay? Now, what do we do with that? It goes down inside here. Here's a new container in the body, all right? And we're gonna go over this in a second, okay? And then it, it chooses the choice and it chooses the card right here. So item builder, what is item builder? So I have a list of things, right? And I could list this one, this one, this one, this one, but that's kind of tedious. Pop-up menu button in and of itself, it's supposed to have a bunch of pop-up menu items in there, right? So why doesn't the system just build it by itself? Well, it does. So what we can actually do is, it, since it's a builder, build context, context, we haven't really used that, we haven't used that at all um, in our videos so far. We'll use them in the future, I can imagine. And we're gonna return choices, the list, dot map. So that's the syntax, dot map, the list, choice of transport, choice, and then we're going to head, get ahead and return the pop-up menu item. That's just the syntax of this. So get the, the list, map it out, and in there you're going to use as the um, argument using the choice. And then you're going to say return new pop-up menu item, which is going to be the list, right? But you'll only have one right here. And I'm going to say the choice of transport, of type choice of transport, and it's going to be the type of objects right here. So what I'm going to do is choice of transport, choice of transport. The value is going to be choice. Why? Because I said somewhere up here. Oh, it's right here. Choice of transport choice. It's going to get this information and put it into the value right inside of here. And it's going to basically say the child is going to be the new text. So what it child being the text, being the widget that actually displays right inside of here. That's just the syntax of that. So the pop-up menu item, item, 
the value is going to be which objects these are going to be, and the child is going to be the text. So if you do that and you end it dot to list, I wish that would the Flutter framework would automatically make that understood, the to list understood, but it doesn't. Okay, you have to actually do that. So what we're actually doing, we're telling the system is here we have choice of transport. This is going to be an object that is related to a list that we have. And that's where the value actually is in these. So if you look at the pop-up menu item, just go ahead and create the list from the choice of transport class. And so it's nice and simple, right? So you don't need to really do anything different. If you call this choose, you'd have to change this to choose. You just, it would automatically build a list for you and you don't have to go ahead and list them all out. Pretty convenient, all right? So I hope that that was um, straightforward. I have to read this over several times to get the syntax down. And quite honestly, if I have to do this in the future, I'm going to have to go back on this and re review the syntax itself. But that's the idea behind how it's nice and easy and how it goes through. Then we're going to say, like we said before, new choice card. Choice card, and we're going to have the property selected choice. So we're going to know somewhere there's going to be a state right here in this. Um, Okay, let's go ahead and go over right here. Um, class choice card extends stateless widget. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I just said you're going to have to have some type of state here, right? We'll go over that in a couple of seconds. Um, choice card, we're going to instantiate it, and we're going to have this variable right inside of here. Widget build return a new card. What's a card? A card, can you see right inside of here? You might have to zoom in a little bit or... Um, magnify it a little bit. There's a little space and a rounded corner right here. If I would have used new container, instead, notice that goes away. So it's just a little feature. Um, again, I, I'm not super impressed, but some people think that that's the biggest thing in the world, and that's perfectly fine. I just disagree, and that that's that's just me. Um, that, that's the difference between a card and a container. So if you want to do that, that's perfectly okay. I'm going to go ahead and center this right here. I'm going to say color. The car, color of the card is going to be yellow or container, whatever you want. And I'm going to have a column. So it's above and below. Icon, text. And the children, which is going to be a list because it's a column, right? It's going to be new icon, choice.icon, and then choice.title. How can I do that? Well, because I'm already getting this information, selected choice into choice right here in and of itself. I'm getting this information, and this is accessing the property of that particular object. All right? So <clears throat> this is the confusing part. This is where I'm going to go, go through states a little bit more. So this widget in and of itself, the bus, let's just call it the bus widget. And this is going to be the boat widget. It's stateless, right? Or is it stateful? It's actually stateless. You know, because somebody made it right here, right? But, but beyond something like that, how do you know the difference? This, the, the widget in and of itself doesn't actually have a state, does it? It just sits there. And what you're actually doing here is that you're getting the choice card and you're pointing to it. If it's the choice card number one, number two, number three, depending upon where you click on this, choice card number two, right inside here, all you're doing is you're getting a new card and you're sticking it inside of here. The A new a widget, let me just use the correct terminology. You're getting a new widget and you're sticking it here. The widget in and of itself doesn't have a state, does it? right here. The state is up here. Here is where you are changing the state. And therefore, it is recognizing something. And therefore, it is putting a new widget right inside of here. So if you think about it, this particular widget, 
choice card is actually stateless. It doesn't do anything. It already has choice.icon because that's created right up here, right? It already has choice.title. All you're doing is which, which card am I grabbing? Am I throwing it inside of this section? So that's where, even though it seems because it's changing, right? It seems like it's stateful, but it actually isn't changing. The, the, if, if you were going to change the card, not the card, but the widget in the card, that actually might be stateful, right? Here, we're not changing the widget, right? We're changing the, 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 state, the, the state of the widget. We're changing the widget in and of itself. The widget here is the pop-up menu icon, right? We're changing the pop-up menu icon itself. We're, this, this is actually changing around. The bus icon, the widget, the bus widget is not actually changing. We're just pointing to a different widget altogether. So now we're pointing to the bus widget. Now we're pointing to the boat widget. So, so I hope that makes sense in the sense of which widgets are stateless and which widgets are stateful. And again, I'm going to go over this over and over Again, mostly just for me, so I get the idea of what is stateful and stateless because if we mess that up, everything falls apart. And so that's how important it is to actually go over. Okay? So I hope this was helpful. Let's keep going on. Thanks.